Hello everyone, in this video we'll be discussing VAV selections with chilled beams. If you are unfamiliar with the Price Active Selection software, it is recommended to watch the selection software tutorial beforehand. With regards to using a chilled beam in a VAV application, the airflow parameters with beams differ from a typical VAV diffuser. To demonstrate the VAV feature of the selection program, I will first make an arbitrary selection. Let's call this CB-1. I will input some arbitrary parameters for cooling, latent, and model type, and do a quick auto selection. I will leave the global conditions on default. The selection returns a 6 foot beam with an 80 nozzle. This 80 nozzle was chosen to specifically meet my load and global conditions. For this exercise, let's say this is how the chilled beam will typically operate in the field at peak conditions. However, for VAV applications, engineers want to reduce the amount of CFM run during occupancy down to absolute minimum ventilation requirements during change in occupancy or unoccupancy in order to save on energy, control comfort, etc. As a note, the selection program is designed to always choose the best nozzle size to meet the parameters. So if I adjust the airflows to this beam, my nozzle selection will auto-adjust to allow me to stay within my parameters. In the field, however, the nozzle selection will always remain the same. To understand how the beam will operate in VAV conditions with the same nozzle, by going into the room and zone selection options, I can select the VAV option for this chilled beam. Selecting this will lock the nozzle I had previously selected. Now I have the ability to adjust my airflow and see the beam's performance in a VAV setting with a fixed nozzle. We can dive deeper into VAV selections by understanding the scope of the airflow turndown. There may be scenarios for certain spaces in which the chilled beams must operate at different airflow levels to meet the minimum ventilation requirement, the sensible load in the space, and also the latent load, if higher than the minimum ventilation. There is a VAV strategy to address these three airflow set points. I will demonstrate this using the selection software. First, we have CB1-CFM1 for minimum ventilation. Ideally, the primary air CFM is as close to the ventilation CFM as possible. Typically, during unoccupied hours, the building system will turn down to this absolute minimum CFM. Second, we have CB1-CFM2, maximum sensible. We need to make sure the primary air going to the beams can still handle the max sensible load in the space without breaking the noise and static pressure limitations. And third, we have CB1-CFM3 for maximum latent. The CFM must meet the maximum latent load in the space during peak times. This is for when the CFM requirements to meet the latent load is greater than the minimum ventilation requirement. For my selection, I will begin with the highest CFM setting. In this case, happens to be the latent load CFM requirement. I know this because I type in my minimum ventilation requirement 190 in this case, I get a message box that states my minimum ventilation is not enough to meet the latent load at my primary air and room conditions. The highest CFM will typically dictate the nozzle size, but by rule of thumb, the higher the static pressure selection for that nozzle, the larger the CFM turndown capability for that nozzle. I will do a quick selection with auto select for this exercise with the ACBL24 two way beam, optimizing for primary air quantity. The program returns two beams at 6 feet length, with 165 CFM going to each beam, totaling 330 CFM in the zone. This meets my latent requirement in the space as well as my sensible. For a VAV application, however, I will not be running a constant rate of 330 CFM to the zone, so I will explore my turndown capabilities. Next, I will go up one line and do another selection, only this time I will select for the max sensible cooling load. As a note, these VAV selections must be done manually in the selection software. First, I will go in and copy all the same parameters as my first selection in order to generate this exact same nozzle and performance. Next, I will select the VAV setting, which locks my nozzle. I will now turn down my air to a level that will allow me to meet my sensible load. However, I need to make sure my new CFM level meets the VAV capabilities of the nozzle. In order for a chilled beam to maintain induction at the nozzle, the beam should be selected at a minimum static pressure of 0.2 inches. This is dictated by the exact pressure column. 
It looks like 110 CFM per beam allows us to not only maintain induction, but we also meet the sensible load in the space. And finally, we have minimum ventilation CFM setting. I will begin by doing the same selection as my first and locking nozzle. The minimum vent requirement is only 190 CFM, so I will now type in 95 CFM for each beam. Now we have our selections for a VAV application for three CFM set points. A control sequence can call for the beams to normally operate at or close to CFM1. And as sensible demand rises, the primary air will increase to CFM2. And as humidity of the space increases, the primary air will rise to CFM3. As a note, for unoccupied hours, the CFM can be driven down even further, even below 0.2 inches of static pressure. The beams may dump air into the space, but this is not as much of a concern with no occupants present. In conclusion, we now know that VAV can still be applied to chilled beams and how the VAV feature in the selection software can be used.